What's up, everybody? Welcome to Pop Culture Philosophers. It is Friday morning, afternoon, whatever you will. And that means it's time for the Rex and Robbie show. So I'm Robbie. This is Rex. What's up, Rex? What's up, man? Uh, it's actually noontime here. Noontime? Noon, morning, afternoon, whatever time zone you're in. Whatever we're happy you want to call it. it. Yeah, whatever you want to call it. Today, we're going to be talking about television. Specifically, what is the best decade of television? Is it now? Is it the 2000s, the 90s, the 80s, the 70s, the 60s, the 50s? What is the golden age of television? Now, I looked this up, Rex. <clears throat> the golden uh, age of television apparently is referred to as the 50s, with like the rise of like live TV, TVs in everybody's house, that the, the rise of it, right? But so many people say we're in a new golden age, and I was looking into it. There are articles saying the 80s are the golden age, articles saying the 90s, the aughts, now. So I'm curious to see what we all have to think about this subject. What is the best decade of television? What is the true golden era in your mind? Is it today? Has it gotten worse? Has it improved? How has television shows like TV shows, like scripted shows, how has it evolved? You know what I'm saying? And if you want to throw reality in there, that's fine too. I don't have any reality. I don't know. What do you think about the topic, Rex? I, I thought that your email felt like uh, when you were telling me the topic was uh, felt somewhat like uh, a, a grade school assignment. And I had to uh, let, me, let me hold on a second. Let me read your email to me. I, I came into the office this morning, opened up the email. I'm like, gosh, I feel like I'm in the fifth grade. It says topic. What is the best decade of television? Come prepared with what de decade you think is the strongest for TV shows. Uh, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, 2000s, 2010s, have a list of shows to prove your point. So diligently, I went to work. Hey, BJ, what's going on? Man? I diligently went to work after receiving this email and made a long list. And I will clearly, at this point, seeing the way that you're leaning, I will say that I'm going to disagree with your statement so far. What? <laughs> what do you disagree with? What are you talking about? Well, I think that, that you cannot call current times, and I, I did list of shows of probably somewhere near the vicinity of 75 to prove my point. You wrote down a list of 75 shows? Oh, yeah, buddy. Yeah, you betcha. <laughs> probably <laughs> something close to that. I didn't do a real count, but, you know, each era had like 14 to 20. So I'm just I'm just making a rough estimate. Um, I got you. It, the reason I don't think that that that, you know, the point you're making that like, all right, so the golden age of television was the 50s. Maybe it was. I, I you know, that that's even a little bit too old for, for me. Not that I didn't see television reruns from the 50s in my era, but they were black and white and so on and so forth. So a little, you know, not to say I didn't watch black and white shows, but it got a little bit lost, right? So, um, but back then, and so if that was the golden age, that's the golden age. I, I disagree. I, I really think the golden age was probably the 70s with the 60s coming up not too too far behind it but to say today and i'm and i'm not bashing the, sh the the shows that are coming out today i'm gonna say that that you cannot use that same measurement because essentially like so many things uh due to technology has evolved so the way that we watch and and things of that nature do we can you even really call it television because you, you're watching it on a television quote unquote, flat screen at home, but you're also watching it on your iPhone or your iPad or whatever, you, you know, whatever medium you're using, technological medium you're using, is it really TV anymore? To me, TV is exactly that photo you have up there, a real curvy screen, okay, with knobs, okay, and back in my day, the remote control was my mom yelling at me to change the channel. Yeah. That, you know, that was, you know, turn it up. Do you ever have that cable box where you had like to push down the dial of the channel you wanted to go to? And it was like one through 20 or something like that. And you had to push. Oh, you, like mean, you mean the initial remote control? No, only rich people had those things uh, huh. back, back in the day I was growing up. So I had a friend who had one. Uh, there, there weren't 20 buttons, my friend. There were maybe six. I mean, you really didn't need too much more than that. Uh, maybe eight on the outside. If, you know, your parents went out and bought some fancy schmancy uh, Zenith um or rca um the big thing in my day was was when you you, you 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 traded in your black and white tv for color tv because all the shows were, were starting to, to broadcast in color those were the, those were the big technological jumps which didn't have essentially change things obviously 
to be able to broadcast in color and stuff, but it didn't fundamentally shift the way that 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 we receive the information, I guess. So so that's the disagreement that I have. And I, I, I can prove my point. So um, so what do I mean by that? All right, so to prove my point, I think the 1960s was for me, it was a very, very significant age of TV. But for me, really, I think the 70s, but that's maybe because of my age, age bracket, in a sense. You know, if somebody older than me may not see it's quite the same way. But yeah, and I'm gonna list these off real quick, obviously. Yeah, go for it. So 1960s, and these are just the ones that come to mind. You had so many shows that we all watched, those those people of my generation. So you got, of course, Star Trek. You knew that one was coming. The Man from Uncle, the Monsters. The, the, the Spider-Man cartoon that we watch religiously with the psychedelic backgrounds. Scooby-Doo, Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea. Of course, the Adam West Batman. Speed Racer, Lost in Space. Adam's Family, Dragnet. Thunderbirds Go! The Adam's Family, Get Smart. And that's just to name a few. Just a few, okay? There's Did you say Star there. Trek? Like Star Trek, for instance. Yeah. Of course. That's on top of my list, you know, nice. for its three-run season, Star Trek, of course. And then you look at the 1970s, which maybe because I was older and stuff, or maybe spent way too much time watching TV, you got The Hulk, Facts of Life, Dukes of Hazzards, uh, Buck Rogers, Space, 1999, Battlestar Galactica, uh, that Saturday morning Shazam cartoon, um, Bionic Woman, Six Million Dollar Man, uh, Wonder Woman. Happy Days, Fantasy Island, Three's Company, uh, One Day at a Time, Different Strokes, Eight is Enough, Taxi, Charlie's Angels, just to name a few, right? So to me, that was the most significant time, 60s and 70s and really the 70s. The Flash, BJ, I believe was, I have that down on my list. I think that was the 80s, right? So then you go to the 80s. The first and Flash, the yeah, the first one. Yeah, right. So the 80s, and then I combine these two, two decades, really. Because there was so much bleed over, like late 80s into the early 90s, right? So 1980s, 1990s, you got MacGyver, Voltron, Roseanne, Seinfeld, Baywatch, uh, Coach, Married with Children, Quantum Leap, Star yeah. Trek Next Generation, Growing Pains, Perfect Strangers, Simpsons, Cheers, Fresh Prince, The Flash, 90210, ALF, Magnum P.I., 21 Jump Street, Night Rider. And then in that era... This is when it starts to fall off a little bit. There were a lot of these TV series started based on movies like Blue Thunder, Alien Nation, Parenthood. They even had a Bill and Ted's animated series. Yeah. You know, so that was a big popular thing to take a very popular movie and, hey, let's turn it into a TV series. Um, 2000. Okay, so two, 2010s, I got nothing. 2000s, one. Firefly was something I watched on network TV. Now, that's not to say I didn't watch TV, obviously, but now all of a sudden, at that, at, at, during that era, technology changed. Yeah. So now, all of a sudden, you had kind of, of watching streaming or DVDs, you know, things like that. There was a period when, because I'm, I'm going to say it out loud, uh, Comcast literally controlled this, this region of the United States for everything. I mean, you couldn't get, you know, anything other than, than uh, Comcast. So... <clears throat> I hated them. That's this is the if there's ever a lesson why. Um, hey, comic book G spot, what's up? Um, if there's any reason why a monopoly shouldn't exist, that is a perfect X Files. Thank you, BJ. And, and you know, I, 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 I like the X Files. Uh, my then wife, my uh, now my ex wife, was re re religiously watched it, but you, you started to have the introduction of the DVDs, the v, you know, the, the VHSs, and then eventually DVDs. And then that changed your, your, your viewing habits. And then I got into, this is when my daughter was really young. So my daughter was born in 2000. So she was really little. I got into a huge fight with Comcast and my temper got the better of me. And I said, you know what? Come get your box and your crap out of my house. Okay. And I remember I, I wrapped up that cable box and left it at my doorstep and didn't give a crap about it. I, I walked, I think it took them three or four days or somebody stole it. I didn't even care. It even rained a few times. I didn't care. I was so mad at Comcast. But then I had no no options, right? So what we ended up doing was we lived off of our DVD player. 
And at her age, that wasn't a problem because we'd watch the same, you know, Disney film over and over and over and over again. So that's pretty much what we do. And, uh, you know, I got a, a, an, an aerial antenna that to watch any local stations like the news and sporting events and stuff like that. And that's how we survived. So I didn't really watch a lot of, of, of programming and it, I really didn't miss it, you know? So I think that that's what really kind of happened. Um, yeah. Uh, uh, money, money. Yeah. Uh, definitely nice. Seinfeld, uh, Simpsons, X-Files. Um, I missed the X-Files off my list, but there were, you know, after that, it just died off. And now I can tell you right now, I don't watch anything on network TV. Usually when I'm watching network TV, it's either the news, a sporting event, or if it's some show, it's because I'm really actually working on my laptop and it's just background noise. Well, you know we don't I mean? need to, we don't have to limit ourselves just to network television. Cause one of my favorite things about the late nineties into the two thousands mm -hmm. was like the rise of the HBO TV show. Right. And like, and stuff. So, so out of all of that stuff, you, you, th you, to you, it's the 60s, 70s is like the era, which mm -hmm. you think is the best. Okay. See, I, I think that a lot of it can be tied up with when you, when you grow up, like, obviously I look at shows from the eighties, like the A team Knight Rider, you mentioned Airwolf. Those are shows that I loved watching when I was a very young kid. The cartoons of the eighties. Airwolf, I love that one. Yeah, I, I the greatest theme song, right? The dun 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 dun. dun, dun. But uh, the cartoons for me and my childhood in the eighties, Masters of the Universe, Transformers, GI Joe, like, um, Superpowers, oh, Galactic is that Guardian. Me or is that you? What? Uh, you 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 kind of blanked out on me. I don't know if it's your oh. end or my end. All right. But you got me now. Yeah, might be okay. my end because Comcast su supplies our internet here. Oh, you never know. Me too, right? Here, retitle so. this. Bashing Comcast. Yeah, let's do that. Um, What was I saying now? Oh, yeah, the cartoons in the 80s are mm -hmm. awesome, right? And then Full obviously, try. yeah, growing up into the, the 90s as a teenager, I have a lot of attachment to those shows. But for me, it's, and I'm going to agree with, with Damien here, Sleepy Reader 666, it's that rise of HBO. Like to me, that's when, and it corresponds for me, like the late nineties, early two thousands, that starts this era of putting these TV shows on DVD. Like you were saying, it starts changing the way we consume. But what happens is instead of just having to jump into a show and follow along, if you want to, if, you, if it catches your interest, you get to start from the beginning and catch up and then follow along. So for instance, I did that with shows like Sopranos. Right. And the, the rise of the HBO drama to me, I think I first my first true, really great TV to me was like Oz, um, The Sopranos. Um, so I'm going through I'm going to go say the 2000s era. I wrote down all these shows Lost, which I adore. Lost is one of those shows that I started watching in like the middle of season two. And then they dropped the DVD. And not only me, but so many other people were able to watch that DVD, get caught up onto the show, regardless of how you thought about it, how it ended. I thought it ended great. The Wire is a superb show. Arrested Development was a network television show that I adore. West Wing was on network TV, but another HBO show, Curb Your Enthusiasm. Deadwood is one of my favorite TV shows ever of all time. Uh, Weeds, Entourage, House, Six Feet Under. Um, and of course, Buffy and Angel, which did start, you know, at that, that end of the 90s, but into those early 2000s. I absolutely love that era of television where I feel like we started getting, and nothing against any of those shows that we loved growing up. We started getting like a truly like more of a sophisticated level of storytelling and and maybe budget, maybe just maybe there was something about it that it was it was more cinematic it wasn't as cheesy as some of the stuff that came before. And I love all those shows, but it was no longer, even the case of the week shows had like a sleekness to them. But for me, the rise of that HBO era, that to me right there was, to, that's to, that's like the height of it right now. And I, 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 I am still, okay, go ahead. I, I, I understand what you're saying, but I think the period that you're talking about was that transition period. And, you know, it, it's, it, how do I put this? I mean, at that point, the format of what we're talking about significantly changed. So I don't see the Sopranos in the same, not, I loved it. Okay. But I, I that was a different era. Okay. And, and technology had already started to, to, to begin the big shift. 
you know, away from network TV. And the result has been network TV is getting worse and worse and worse along the way. So I, I guess in a sense, you, the question of what's the best decade of television is too generic. That's my opinion. Okay. Because I look at these, these kind of HBO type things and, and the series that they developed as the beginning of that transition away. So now look, we got streaming services all over the place. And, and shows that are developed specifically for that. Now, is that bad? No, it's not bad. But it is definitely a completely different beast. Almost as much as a black and white show would be from a color color show. And I think that the, the parameters were different. I, I don't disagree. Some of it was cheesy. You know, Three's Company, Sleepy Reader, I agree with that statement. Um, there were a lot of sitcoms. And the reason there were a lot of sitcoms... Some of it is based on how society was and what they wanted at that time. But some of it was because when you had network TV in its traditional form, there was no, oh, you know what? We're going to make good Game of Thrones. Uh, yeah, the, the next season's going to be 12 months out, 18 months out, 20 months out. Okay, that, that kind of option didn't exist for network TV because you had a slot and the slot was every week and you had to have something produced every week. For that for that series, you you couldn't go and say we're going to take a break for like twenty four months before we put the next season out because by that point, guess what? You've lost your slot. They're gonna the networks have to stick something else in it. Yeah. So, well, that's why you would have so many of those case of the week and sitcoms because, like I was saying, like there wasn't most there wasn't a lot of opportunity for people to start a story at the beginning, so they weren't telling one big large story. Usually, they were telling like individual stories. Yes. Right. Yeah. Right. And, and there is, there is, I think, a from, from a producer, director, or writer standpoint, that is a much more difficult job than what you have today. Okay. You tell me, oh, you know what, you, you got, you got it, you got eight episodes or, you know, 10 episodes. Oh, you can decide how many episodes you want. You didn't have that option with network TV, right? So then, okay, I know I've got 10 episodes. I don't know if I'm going to get canceled or not. You know, type, type question doesn't really exist. They're going to let you finish. It may not air. They may shelve it like Netflix has been slashing left and right, but you know you've got an entire season guaranteed. They've picked it up. You can tell your story. Bang, bang, bang. Network TV, you didn't have that. You didn't really have that option. Okay. You got picked up. You might get canceled. You might not. Now, show me you can get the ratings every week. So now you've got to write something that appeals to you. Got to tell enough of a story that brings people back. Your regular devoted viewers. I can't miss that show. You know, Friends is coming on. I forgot to mention Friends. Friends is coming on, you oh, know, yeah. next week, blah, 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 right? So then then you've also got to write something that can engage a new viewer. I mean, what is this Friends thing you're talking about? Like, I didn't watch the first season, you know, but everybody's talking about it. It's all the buzz. I'm like, yeah, let me sit down and watch it. Yeah. Okay. And now you've got to write something that's going to appeal to both sides. Man, that's not easy. Okay, you're writing Mandalorian. You know what audience you got. You can tell a complete story. You know how to tell the story. Okay, you can link it all together. Somebody misses some. You know, you're on on episode four, but somebody says, "Oh, I got to watch this." Okay, that guy has the option to go back to episode one and catch up to episode four with the rest of us. So now you're able to tell a one conti continuous story, okay, without break, and you can plan for that and know that. And if you decide, eh, you know, I don't know, I'm not feeling good. I'm going to take 12 months to hiatus. Oh, okay, it's not going to be back for 12 months. Sometimes and longer. Like, look at Stranger Things, right? And right, the, exactly. bi the binge nature now, like back in the day, at least for me, I didn't, I don't ever remember watching eight hours of television straight on unless I'm like home from school sick or something. I'm watching The Price is Right. Yeah, you I mean, I, yeah, we didn't have the binge factor either, right? So, yeah. what I love about the 2000s, though, is that HBO was trying to tell these these stories. I think they were also telling good episodic, you know, storytelling, like giving me a story, but connecting it to larger tissue. Even shows like Friends, uh, Friends and things like Seinfeld at times did kind of have an overall arc that they were gearing yes. towards, right? Yes. You know, and that's, you that, see that's that. what I mean. That, that's the challenge, yeah. you know? You got to keep, you got to continue the arc for those that have been devotedly watching every week but then leave enough to entertain that guy who's coming in, that person coming in, watching, picking it up in the middle yeah. and being able to quickly transition to, to it's like, oh, this is a good show. It's funny. And then yeah. be able to transition and let that person become. And there's no going back and trying to catch up. So the challenge with the directors, the actors, the writers and everybody else was you're, you're kind of 
juggling, trying to keep this entire audience together. Yeah. I tell, no tell you what, the uh, Netflix was in, incredibly important during this time where we were transitioning into, we're not, I'm not even talking about the streaming service. I'm talking about when Netflix was like DVDs oh, yes. through the mail, yes. right? Because mm -hmm. when those TV show sets would come out, and I remember they would be ridiculously priced. It would be like $150 for season yep. one of something, right? Nobody was really, I mean, I was buying certain things like Star Trek and Buffy when those DVD sets were coming out. But having that Netflix option to have TV shows mailed to you so you could get caught up. Like that's how I watched right. Sopranos and Deadwood and, and all that stuff. But like I was like Oz was the first show. I was watching that on HBO at my friend's house because they had HBO. And I would go there on like Wednesday nights, I think, to watch Oz. And then that's when the Sopranos first started. But being able to watch these shows on my own time not restricted to the time slot, not being forced to watch commercials. That was the start of not just the change in the way that they're telling these stories, but in the way that we're absorbing these stories. On our time, no commercials. We have more demands from the beginning. We have more demands as an audience now. So now I, I think it's equally hard on all sides, but that was a very intriguing time for me for television is seeing that change and how it's morphed right. into streaming and everything. Oh, I agree. I, I mean, I totally agree with you. I mean, I'm, I'm not saying that, that it's bad or anything else. I'm saying that I, I guess I, what, what I'm trying to say is that, that it's really apples to oranges. So, so the measure once, once the switch happened has to be on different parameters. It can't be measured in the same parameters. So they're really not comparable because they are apples and oranges. Gotcha. And and that's that's my point. Listen, the, the 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 shift in technology allowed me to free myself from Comcast, which I got to tell you, you know, and I'm they talk about cord cutters. I was one of the first and I watched technology evolve. So so essentially without Comcast in, in, in my neighborhood, uh, hey, what's going on tomorrow? Hey, what's up? Two gun Pedro. Hey, fellas. So I used to have because I I could only get Internet through through Comcast. I had to get a little uh, MiFi card, and I was using that for internet. So we were watching a lot of DVDs, and then eventually I started to like watch Hulu. Uh, Everything Sunny in Philadelphia. I remember watching that series uh, on Hulu, and and you know slowly I, technology kind of caught up with me, and that was really the amazing part. Now, obviously, you know I get my high speed internet through, uh, believe it or not, through T-Mobile. They they little you know, big tower and, and it's just high speed uh, internet through, through, uh, uh, you know, modem through, through the cell phone towers. And I pay 50 bucks a month. So technology has just kind of, kind of caught up and, and the programming is different, but there's some great stuff out there. I don't disagree with like, I love Sopranos, obviously. Um, let me, I'm just trying to think some of the other series that came out, Deadwood. Um, yeah. Oh, shoot. What was the, the Western one Westworld. Um, there's some, some some really great stuff that's come out, it, but it's just different. It's more movie like, if you will. You have yeah. more of the freedom of the movies than you did back then when you were doing network TV. You know, every episode had to be different, engaging. So really, how they did it was, you would have a new storyline, but to continue a story, you'd have that that continuous story in the background, hopping from episode to episode to episode to try to give everybody something, you know. Something that, that they wanted, you know. Yeah. So it, it was interesting. It, it it was an interesting time. But for me, the influence of of like the sixties and the seventies, you know, sixties mostly from a rerun standpoint. You know, that's another thing. Reruns. You know, that's how you feel a lot of airtime was was you know, and, and that's how people would kind of catch up to things. Isn't that never... crazy? Yeah, like, it's crazy how timeless <laughs> television was for a few decades there because. I remember being a kid and thinking Three's Company, like I didn't have the idea in my head that that show was from like the decade before, right? right? Like to me, I'm watching it as a kid, just enjoying it. Same thing with like Gilligan's Island, like TV was like that. I don't know if that's so much anymore, you know, like. Well, it, it isn't. There are a lot more options, obviously. Um, a lot of different things, the way that, that you know, we view things. Like, you, you, you know, I don't know if you do it, but you, you can watch YouTube on your TV. So it, yeah. it's like, you know, the content has really changed. Um, I will say it from my daughter's standpoint, though, uh, watching her kind of evolve. You know, I, I may have told the story before. So I, one day my TV went out, right? 
and you know I'm like clicking it nothing it's just dead right and I'm thinking oh crap I'm gonna have to go to you know Walmart or a Target and buy a new TV so I started looking online shopping around whatever and about three days I was busy I never got around to, to doing it just you know just did other things watch stream stuff on my computer my daughter never even noticed for three days she didn't even notice that the TV wasn't working yeah now luckily it turns out that my 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 dumb cat had gotten behind there and pulled the plug out so before i went and clicked the buy buy it now button i went back plugged it in tv was fine okay i just didn't notice for three days i remember being her age growing up um there i'm sorry tomorrow we gotta tune in next wednesday for a rex cap we really <laughs> gotta make some t-shirts for that um i remember being her age if the tv went out for three days i would have lost my mind yeah. i would have absolutely lost my mind you know, she didn't even know. She was on her phone the whole time. She didn't even notice. Or on a computer. She, it, it didn't even bother her. So kind of how we, we we look, you know, we, we're viewing this stuff. How long is it going to be before the concept of how we watch TV changes? Yeah. You know, well, it's already it, changed in our lifetimes, right? 100%. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. Now, it's I will crazy. say this because I, I understand that you're making the distinction between the network time and the post-network time. But... 2000s being that transition on my list i do have some network shows that i, I adore from this era which is lost uh, arrested development west didn't, wing didn't, watch, didn't really watch a few episodes of all of those never really watched it never got luffy and angel and house like i loved those shows and i would watch I them week angel week. yeah i watch angel a little bit you know uh what was it like on a cw or something yeah well, it was wb at CW? that time right it was wb at the time and then it yeah, changed wb it. at the time you're right you're right uh, Buffy, I watched, but again, I have to point out that was Buffy turned out to be a movie. Let's turn it into a TV series. And then obviously, uh, uh, Angel was an offshoot of Buffy yeah. spinoff, right? Which was the other thing you don't really see anymore. Spinoffs. Okay. And there've been some very successful ones. Cheers. Uh, Frazier guess- bouncing off of Cheers. Yeah. You know, so, so there were, there were quite a few. So that. Kind family, of Ma- family Matters actually spins off of uh, Perfect Strangers because Harry That's was right. the elevator correct. operator. Correct. Yeah. Correct. So that wasn't, you know, that kind of thing doesn't really happen anymore. Well, and, you just and- had that what happen with uh, Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul. And now we have House of the Dragon, which is a spinoff of Game of Thrones. So th- that stuff's still there. And the whole yeah, MCU is a spinoff on a spinoff on a spinoff. But, but here's the thing. I, I think one thing, one of the differences that okay, Breaking Bad. I've heard great things about it. I really have never watched it. Believe it. Believe Me neither. It or not. Actually, uh, neither. and 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 the other one that spun off of Breaking Bad, uh, Call Me Saul. Or, you know, I never watched that. See, that's and, why some people say it's the it's the the two thousand teens are the best era, the best decade. But, but which I don't, don't. But because of things like Breaking Bad and yeah. I guess the beginning of Game of Thrones and stuff like that. But here's the thing, and you know, be it good or bad. There isn't, I never watched Breaking Bad because it got into too many seasons and I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm not going all the way back to watch this. Okay. You know, I, it just kind of felt like oh, I'm already beyond it. I'm not going all the way back. You know, even though my friends are telling me, oh, this is great. You got to watch it. It's awesome. You know, it's a, it's a, it's a meth dealer and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. You know? And I just, you know, and it's every time I didn't watch it, there were more seasons. I'm like, well, now I've got to watch like what, four or five seasons to catch up and I'm not doing it. That wasn't a problem with network TV. First, you didn't have that option. And second of all, okay, I'm sitting at home. It's 8 o'clock. I want to watch something. All right, so let me flip through my four channels and watch it and find something. And I pick something. And if it was in the middle, I'd start watching it. Maybe I would start to pick up on it and start to be a thing for me midway through the, the, the series. But now that option's taken away because I can't just... I'm not going to just start watching Breaking Bad in season three, episode nine. Yeah. Why, why would I do that? Right? That that doesn't make any sense. I have to go to episode one. I think about the investment in episode one. Um, the Expanse is a perfect example of that. And and how sometimes I think this is the negative part. I watched the first five uh, seasons and I, I binged it. And I, 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 I think that was the last thing I binged because it gives me a headache to do anything like that. I, I can't binge more than the season. I watched all five seasons and then it took them another three years to get season six out there. And guess what? You've lost me. 
I'm not, I yeah. haven't watched it up to this point. Why? Because I forgot what happened in the first five seasons and I'm not going back to rewatch them. That's too much of an investment in my life. Gotcha. That's why you, you know? just got to watch a YouTube video where someone sums it up and uh figure drawing Parker Lewis can't lose was my, my shit back in the day. Man. I like that. Actually, I did like Parker Lewis, but you know, Still again, BJ TV wants to know something. what do you got a favorite current TV show Rex. for myself? Yeah. For yourself. I, 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 what's funny is that, that it's going to change right now because of streaming, it's going to change. You know, that's the funny thing. Whereas before, back in that era, I could tell you, yeah, you know, I love love watching Friends or I love, you know, Star Trek The Next Generation or, you know, whatever. But if you were to ask me what I'm watching right now, it's probably House of the Dragon. I've enjoyed that. She-Hulk, I've enjoyed that. You know, I could say that I love, I loved, uh, you know, Hawkeye, but again, that's over. And I don't know when the next season's going to start and, yeah. you know, whatever. Um, There's not a lot like going on at the same time anymore, right? That's another well, thing that's changed. Yeah, it's just, it's shifted. And again, I'm not necessarily saying it's a bad thing. I mean, I mean, I loved Lou Ferrigno's Hulk. And I watched that religiously every single week. But now I can watch the Hulk and She-Hulk battle. And it looks real and they have superpowers. And it's just not, you know, Lou Ferrigno jumping out somewhere going, rrr, 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 you know, like, like that. I mean, it's, you know, so I appreciate the, the, obvious, the obvious improvement in what we're seeing. But I'm just saying that it's very, very different. And there is yeah. something lost. If, you BJ, know, that, uh, I don't BJ lists a few modern-ish shows there. Justified is one of my favorites. I love Justified. I'm super pumped for that show to come back. Um, I'm right there with Rex. The only mo show I'm watching week to week right now is She-Hulk and House of the Dragon. I'm enjoying House of the Dragon. She-Hulk's just kind of a mixed bag for me right now. Um, we had the whole chat about it last night. It was really great. Manny was there. It was. It was. I feel like I just saw Lou Ferrigno's Hulk somewhere too, bro. Um, that was a great conversation. About him. There was just an article about him that he could successfully say he was the last uh, uh, Incredible Hulk with the real muscles. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's true. To that effect. that yeah, is that true. Sense. Totally true. Yeah. Those are the only ones I'm watching. But this year, so far, one of my favorite shows I've watched was the latest season of Stranger Things. I thought that was splendid entertainment. I loved it. I loved it so much. So I don't know. There's I been mean, some I'm, good I'm stuff. Gonna I'm gonna watch, uh, you know, the Lord of the Rings, uh, uh, one that's that's been. I just haven't. Oh yeah, to. Rings of Power. That's out now, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. I've heard mixed oh, reviews. The Boys season three kicked so much ass this year too. Like, yeah, that's obviously great the one. Boys, uh, another one. You know, but again, I'm not currently watching it because it's over. And I, I, I just yeah. feel like there's something missed there. You know what I mean? And, and call it what you will. I mean, you know, maybe I'm getting served a fillet, and you know, it's delicious and cooked just right. But sometimes there's that old comfort food, you know what I mean? Like a shepherd's pie or, or some chili or whatever. And I, I feel like about that's reservation cool. dogs, but I haven't seen it. But I've heard that really good things about reservation dogs. I have not seen it myself either. See, right I now I'm right. spending my TV time rewatching Twin Peaks from the 90s because I love that show. Oh, and go. I haven't watched the uh, Showtime one that they did a few years ago. So I'm rewatching the old one so I can watch that one. So I, I really hate to say it, it for network TV. What I'm predominantly watching, and I'm not saying I'm not commenting on quality or it's great or whatever, but when I'm working and you're kind of like just half attention, because when I stream something, I want my full attention on that show, right? But if I'm working, I can't get my full attention, so I have network TV on. I'm generally watching, and I hate to say these, to say this, but like these talent shows, like America's Got Talent and uh, Voice and things of that nature, or American yeah. Ninja, you know, it, it, you know, because I can. I'm working on something. I don't have to watch every second of it, right? But some some really funny act comes up. I'm like, oh, what's this? <laughs> what's this yeah. guy doing, right? But you know, that's that's how you know network TV's evolved. Where I got the news on. Other than that, I'm you know I'm catching a Phillies game here and there. But even then, you know, you're a baseball fan. You know the nature of it. Yeah, you, you don't have to watch every pitch of every inning to well, know. See, what, that's what's why going I love on. baseball so much is that I can have baseball on and I can like be reading or doing something else and like you know. You can tell, you can hear it when something's about to happen. You got to pay attention. It's not like when you're watching, not a fan. yeah, if you're watching <laughs> basketball, you can't do that. You know what I'm saying? And hey, football's about to start. So a lot of TV time's about football, to be going I, to football. Yeah, football, I, I got to admit, I mean, you, you're not playing 162 games. You know, you, 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 this, yeah. it happens once a week. You have a favorite team. So you're watching it. You know, you, you, you're invested in it. But uh, figure drawing is not a, f a fan of America's Got Talent. <laughs> I'm not saying. Uh, uh, 
Sons of An Anarchy, BJ. Yeah, I enjoyed that 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 show as well. I, I really like that show. But again, those are few and far between now on network TV. So, yeah. um, you know, it, it's right. was was Sons of, Anarchy, Sons of Anarchy network TV. Yeah, it was right. Yeah, it was on FX, right? That's right, FX. That's yeah. right. So it was Justified. Justified yeah. was on FX. FX had some really good shows there for what the Shield was FX. Uh, they, uh, Nip Tuck. I didn't like Nip Tuck, but that was that was a popular never FX show for a while there. Yeah, never watched it. As soon as is Nip Tuck plastic surgery, nah, I got no time for it. Don't really care. <laughs> yeah. All right. So we had a that was a great conversation. I figured it that was a good one. Short answer. Rex says uh, 70s, and I say 2000s. Yeah. Good. Come on, 70s. 70s. Buck Rogers. Come on. That was <laughs> awesome. I love that series. Okay. The original Battles Battlestar Galactica, where we learn the words like Felder Carb. And you know, come on. Yeah, right. Okay. Defining. I mean, think of all the movies that ended up getting made from a lot of the series from that era. Think yeah. about it. Starsky and Hutch. You know, not that it was a good movie, but still. This is the second week in a row you brought up the Starsky and Hutch movie. I think you got a. I think you got a. Oh, I love Starsky it, right? and Hutch. What the Gran Torino, <laughs> you know, sliding over the, the the hood. Come on, man, that was the best. Nice. That was the best show. All right, so since Monday is Labor Day, we're not doing the comic collectible show on the EXP. However, I will be there on Wednesday along with AR Comics, and uh, there's going to be a big giveaway. And uh -huh. we're so, giving away the this. Giveaway. Red... Hey, there it is right there. Oh, there you go. Never mind. Good. I'm not tell good us about either. it, Rex. All right. So uh, on Wednesday from 6 to 8 Eastern, we're going to have, and we did something like this uh, the week of July 4th. We're going to have big party. It's going to be, uh, Robbie's going to join us. He's usually here on uh, Mondays. Uh, Alec from AR Comics is going to be with us. Of course, John's going to be here. I'm going to be here. Um, and, uh, we're going to be giving away the Red Sonia She Devil uh, card set. We're going to give you a, a, a complete box. A, a this complete box is valued, believe it or not, at twelve hundred. So if you tune in and watch, that will be the giveaway of the night. And hopefully, John is not watching. John's birthday is happens to be on Labor Day, so we're going to going to plan a little surprise, something or enough or, or another on Wednesday show for John. Nice. Okay, so that's it. Should be a good time, and it was a good time last uh, 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 the last time we did the, all four of us together. It was it was a good time. Man. Yeah, I, I had a lot of fun that night, so I'm looking forward to it. I'm, I really am. So, so yeah, Heck make yeah. sure to tune in. Uh, so six to eight uh, uh, p.m. Eastern on the Experience Wednesday, this upcoming Wednesday night, and uh, no show Monday night, obviously because of all. Yes, but we're going to be even better on Wednesday when we combine the shows together into one. Voltron experience show. <laughs> love that. I actually love that show. Which one? Voltron? Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Voltron yeah, I have is a dope. Full Voltron from Japan. Somebody brought it for me. Oh, full, nice. Uh, Voltron. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Nice. Is Nick doing the original art show tonight? I see some original no art. No right original in front of art tonight as well. So, oh, okay. we are, uh, because of the holiday, knowing that, uh, you know, people probably have plans or whatever else. And, you know, I'm sure he does as well. So, uh, the original art show will return next Friday. 7 p.m. Eastern. What? I don't remember that, but okay. I'll take your word for it, Manny. Convince everyone Venom's. I don't remember that either. Yeah, I don't remember that. But I don't remember what we, I don't remember what we talked about on Monday. So <laughs> yeah, me neither. I don't remember what we talked about today. All right, everybody. We appreciate you joining us. Be sure to check us out over at the experience. There's a link to that channel below. Sub them up because I'm there every Monday, but not this Monday, because we're doing the combined show on Wednesday, giving away that awesome prize. We'll see you there. Rex, thank you for joining me for this great conversation. Always a great time, Robbie. Thank you for having me, bud. Always. Y'all out there, stay fresh, stay clean.